Long after the invention of airplanes, we still dream of being able to fly on our own. But without wings, our options are kind of limited. Jetpack? Too unpredictable. Magical aerodynamic cape? Too impractical. But what about a deck chair with some helium balloons attached to it? That just might work. This is what if. And here's what would happen if you tried to fly with helium balloons. Helium is the second lightest and the second most abundant element in the universe. Ranking just above it is hydrogen. But there's a reason why we don't use that for air travel anymore. Helium is lighter than air, which is what makes some balloons float. And helium doesn't catch fire, which makes it a safe choice for parties. But what if you wanted to use helium for something else, like a nice little weekend getaway? How many balloons would it take? How high could you go? And how would you get back down safely? A regular birthday party balloon, measuring about 30 centimeters in diameter, is capable of lifting about 14 grams of weight. So, if you weighed 50 kilograms, you'd need about 4,000 balloons to really get floating. The average latex balloon filled with helium normally costs somewhere between 50 cents and one dollar, which means that your balloon chair adventure could cost as much as $4,000. For that price, you could also fly first class to another continent. But if you're still committed to using helium-filled balloons to get around, you'd be better off using weather balloons. In 1982, aspiring Air Force pilot Larry Walters had a similar idea. He and his girlfriend bought 42 2.4-meter balloons, along with some helium and some strong line. Walters filled up his balloons with helium, tied them to a deck chair, and then sat down with a beer, some sandwiches, a CB radio, and a pellet gun. But if Larry Walters was expecting a nice little breezy picnic in the sky, he was sorely mistaken. Walters shot upwards at a speed of 300 meters per minute. He suddenly found himself nearly five kilometers above his hometown of San Pedro, which coincidentally was in a flight path to Los Angeles International Airport. After being spotted by two airline pilots and realizing that he was still climbing at a remarkable rate, Larry Walters decided it was time to come back down. He shot out some of the balloons above him with his pellet gun and was back on the ground 90 minutes later. Since Larry Walters' maiden voyage by balloon, lots of other people have succeeded in performing similar stunts. But while it is possible to create your own little personal aircraft with just a deck chair and some helium-filled balloons, does that make it a good idea? We don't recommend it. Your success in helium flying depends on having the right equipment, the right amount of balloons, and optimal weather conditions. You wouldn't want a gust of wind to push you into a flight path or to blow you into some nearby power lines, not to mention the legal trouble you'd find yourself in for dangerously operating an unauthorized aircraft. Either way, getting your hands on enough helium for your flight might be harder than you think. That's because there's a serious helium shortage right now. While helium remains the second most abundant element in our universe, most of the helium that comes from Earth ends up leaking into space because it's lighter than any of the gases in our atmosphere. And the helium shortage doesn't just put the balloon industry at risk. We use helium to cool the magnets in the MRI machines that provide us with incredibly detailed and accurate images inside our bodies. You should also know that the fiber optic cables that bring internet and cable TV to your home are made in a pure helium atmosphere. Helium is in our airbags and in our hard drives. It's also used to clean rocket engines. So yeah, even if you can't see it or smell it, your life would be very different without it. Then again, any dramatic change in our planet's atmospheric makeup is going to seriously impact our lives. Have you ever wondered what our life would be like if 10% of our atmosphere was deep voice gas? Oh my, oh my God. Well, that's a story for another What If.